There's a story behind that for, for Uncle John here. Reminded of John Hammond from what happened 20 years ago. What happened 20 years ago? 21 years ago. His all-time favorite team lost to uh, the New York Jets. Oh, Super Bowl three. Uh oh. And Uncle John has come to baptize Eric. Right, Eric? And he just came back from the actual history museum. Yeah, Eric. What's your dad doing? Eric. 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 Yeah. Uncle John right there. Say something witty for the TV camera. Witty, witty, witty. This is KMGH 7 News at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Jury selection began today in the negligent homicide trial of a former Morgan County Sheriff's deputy. There's Riggy there. Publicity. And that's where Darren Duarte is standing by now with more on the He's story. a thirsty Jared guy. Thirsty guy. Jared Verbasco is finally getting his day in court, but like you said, it's not here in Fort Morgan where the alleged crime happened. It's 45 miles away in a town mm. called Sterling. The former deputy, of course, wanted the trial moved because he said the case was just getting too much publicity here. Most residents agree uh, Verbasco wouldn't have gotten a fair trial here in Fort Morgan. That's what I'm up to. I mean, he's already. Anyway, I'm not sure. Oh, Carlos, that's a special film. Well, is that? No, you can get it. It's pretty handy. Oh, Bobby, your dad is shaved. Is he coming like that? What are you talking about? Oh, Let us take a moment to place ourselves in the presence of God, of our God, in the presence of the tabernacle, in the presence of his body and blood, our God in the presence of the, of the liturgy of the word, as it speaks to us through the scriptures, and maybe most importantly, recognizing God's presence within each one of us. Perhaps one of the uh, most exciting things that can happen to uh, a Christian community of which we are all a part is when we welcome a new member into, into our community. And so we come here with joy, uh, not only for uh, Robert and Robin and Eric, but also joy for ourselves and joy, joy for this parish community of St. Thomas More, of which uh, Eric is being initiated into. And so I would ask Bob and Robin, what name have you given to your child? Eric Lee. And what do you ask God's church for Eric Lee? You have, by asking for Eric to be baptized, you have accepted the responsibility of training Eric in the practice of the faith. <clears throat> it will be your duty to bring him up according to God's commandments, as Christ taught us, to loving God and our neighbor. And so we ask, do you clearly understand what you're undertaking? Yes. Okay. And
standing in their places as godparents, are you ready to help these parents in their duty as Christian parents? Yes. Uh, Eric Lee, the, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. And in, in its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of the cross. I now trace the cross on your forehead and invite your parents and godparents to do the same. Daddy Cat, just lean over. Sign Eric the sign of the cross. The next part of our baptismal celebration contains a little reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came forward and addressed the eleven disciples in these words. Full authority has been given to me, both in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to carry out everything I have commanded you. And know that I am with you always, until the end of the world. Certainly it's appropriate that we have all gathered from different parts of the country, all different parts of the community, because in a very real way, we here present are representatives of the Christian community. The Christian community here, to exists at St. Thomas More, the larger community of the Archdiocese of Denver, and the, the even larger community of the worldwide church. And that is what Eric Lee is being initiated into tonight. Actually, this is simply the beginning of his initiation process. It's uh, certainly not the, not the end of the road, but it's the beginning of initiation, which, as Matthew is learning these days, continues, continues with the sacrament of First Communion, and then after that with the sacrament of Confirmation. And all those three sacraments are sacraments of initiation. So this really begins a process for, for Eric Lee. And so we, we have a lot of high hopes and a lot of trust um, in this community, specifically with, with Eric's parents. They will be able to continue with God's grace to, to uh, enable Eric to, to learn about his faith and to practice his faith so that as he grows older, more and more, these baptismal promises which his parents and godparents make on his part today will become more and more his own, so that day by day as he grows older, he can say, yes, I have chosen Jesus Christ as the one who I am to follow in this life. He is not only my model, he's a lot more than my model, he's the person who I am going to allow to live in me and live through me so that all of my actions are his actions. All of my thoughts and words are his thoughts and words so that I can be an example to others, mainly to my family and friends, of what it means for God to love people in the world. The, uh, the story of the uh, stove being <coughs> moved into uh, Marie's apartment this weekend um, probably will be told for many years to come. Um, but it, in a sense, it's kind of an example for us of what it, it means for there, for there to be teamwork, the same kind of teamwork that enabled uh, Chris and I, I guess, to win most of the turkey guys <laughs> growing up. That, that's, that same kind of teamwork. And, and it's going to be teamwork for, for Bob and Robin to um, enable Eric to learn and to practice his faith. And it's going to be teamwork that all of us are going to join into uh, and join with them as the best we can. Um, certainly with the sacrament of baptism, God begins the story of grace in, in, uh, in Eric's life. And 
Amen. that grace is built on. So that's not going to be something magical. Kurt's going to have to find out what that grace is and means in his life and how he's going to be expected to, to help that grace work in him. Um, if anything, I guess, you know, Eric is going to learn more from his parents and from those of us in this room and from his, his other family members and friends. He's going to learn more by the way, by watching what we do and say, then he will ever learn by sitting in church, listening to a gospel, or, or listening to a homily for 10 or 15 minutes each week, or going into CCD class for an hour a week. He's going to learn more by watching you and I, by watching our example, and by listening to us, than he ever will uh, specifically in church. We are all here together to work as a team, and whatever people that Eric encounters along his way, we know that this is going to be, this day is really the basis for all of that. If anything, I guess we, we pray for Bob and Robin especially today, that they will be given the strength and the grace and the love necessary to, to carry on with the with the promises that they make for Eric today. So that Eric, as he grows older, can make decisions on his own. Whatever decisions those are, at least they're going to be well-formed decisions and decisions based on, on knowledge and love of God. And so we, we welcome you, Eric, and we, we welcome the, the love that your parents have given to you to bring you to the state. You know, a lot of times I tell parents one of the most awesome things, I guess, in their lives is the bringing about of, of a child into the world. And maybe the second most awesome thing that they do is to bring the child to baptism. Because, wow, they're making promises that um, will not be always easy to keep. They will be making promises that um, at times will be very difficult. They'll be making promises that basically our things will not always be um, peaches and cream. That by being a disciple of Christ in this world will not always be e excuse me, easy for you. It may be tough at times for you. But with God's grace and with the love of the people here in this room, we think, we think, we hope and we pray that God will be with you as you continue to grow in faith and in love. As we remain seated, I would simply ask us to ask the Lord to look lovingly upon this child who is to be baptized and on his parents and God's parents and on all the baptized. And at the end of each prayer, I would ask to please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, bathe this child in light. Give him the new life of baptism and welcome him into your holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Through baptism and confirmation, Eric, we will ask God to make you a faithful follower and a witness to your God, to His gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to lead Eric in the holy life to the joys of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Make the lives of his parents and godparents examples of faith to inspire Eric every day of his life. We pray to the Lord. And keep his family always in your love, we pray to the Lord. Renew the grace of baptism in each one of us, Lord, we pray to the Lord. My brothers and sisters, we now ask God to give this, new ch this child new life in abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. 
At this point, I would ask those children who have already been baptized to come forward and to help me to bless this water. So if Matthew and, and Rebecca could come forward. Okay. And I just want to can you trust Mark up here. Okay. 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 Matthew and Rebecca, if you could just put your hand into this water, okay? Put your hand into this water, your right hand here. And just keep it there for a moment, okay? Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we used your gift of water which you have made a rich symbol of the grace that you gave us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your Son, Jesus, willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. And after his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church, and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your Son. You created us to be your own likeness. Cleanse us from sin and in a new birth to innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. And now, Father, we ask you with your Son to, hence to send the Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the de death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Yeah. Amen. And I would ask now the parents and godparents to please stand. And you might want to stand in a little semicircle so everybody can see. Okay. Parents and godparents, you have come here to present. Eric Lee for baptism, water and the Holy Spirit. He is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring Eric up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives him is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in his heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, we ask you to renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this child is about to be baptized. And so I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Yes. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now I would ask Rebecca and Matthew to stand in the front row, please, to witness, to help us witness this baptism of their new cousin. So Bob and Robin, is it your will that Eric should be baptized in the faith of the church, which we have all confessed here with you? Yes, yes. Okay. Please place Eric's head over the front. Okay. Matthew. 
him to what? <laughs> Eric Lee, Big I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. was asking earlier why we use oil, why we use oil as a sign of, of initiation, why we use oil in the sacrament of baptism. The reason we use oil is because we know that when we are baptized, we become, we become kings in a very real sense. We become people who are willing to serve other people. And so, as a sign of our willingness to serve as Christians, we also anoint the newly baptized with oil. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you, Eric, from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. In the early church, what would usually, usually happen at this time is that the Christian, the person being baptized, would be have gone into the water with just a cloth around his or her waist, just an outer garment, a white garment. And they would come out of the water very cold and chilly, and another white garment would be presented to the person so that that person not only would keep warm, because it was usually done at night, but also as a symbol of being a person who is being given a new life with Christ, and as a symbol of this new life, we give to Eric this baptismal bib. You have become, Eric, a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment that is presented the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a child of the light, and he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. And when the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. This light may not always be kept burning, literally. But hopefully it will always be a sign for Eric and for you of the light that has been given to him in baptism. This new life, this new grace, this new gift that has been given to him by him. And at this time I would ask us all to, to, all to stand, please. Eric has now been reborn in baptism. He is called now the child of God, for so indeed he is. In confirmation, he will receive the fullness of God's Spirit. In holy communion, he will share the banquet of Christ's sacrifice, calling God his Father in the midst of the church. In the name of his child and the spirit of our common sonship, let us pray together in the words that our Lord, our Savior Christ, has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Except for Ben Robin, I would ask us all to raise our right hand so that we can pray for Bob and Robin and for Edward. God the Father, through his Son, the Virgin Mary's child, has brought joy to all Christian mothers as they see the hope of eternal life shine on their children. May he bless Robin. She now thanks God for the gift of her child. May she be one with him and thanking him forever in heaven. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. God is the giver of all life, human and divine. May he bless Bob, the father of this child. He and his wife will be the first teachers of their child in the ways of faith. May they be always the best of teachers, bearing witness to the faith by what they say and by what they do. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. And by God's gift through water and the Holy Spirit, we are all reborn to everlasting life. In his goodness, may he continue to pour out his blessings upon Eric. May he always make him always, wherever he may be, faithful, a faithful member of his holy people. And may he send his peace upon all of us who are gathered here today. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. And may Almighty God bless each and every one of us here today. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. This celebration has ended and in a very real way but our celebration continues. And we thank you. And as a sign of our welcome to Eric into our Christian community, Let's give them a little round of applause. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Eric, let me out of this. Okay. So that's what that's our charge of the disparaging Michelle, that'd be very discouraging that they don't have respect for our uh, alma maters. She's a uh, gym teacher. So, you know, it's just really hard to get anybody up there. So, yes, it's not. So, are you guys having a really intellectual conversation over here? We're discussing St. Bowles. Bill Lambert, Chris's favorite basketball player? Let's talk about St. Bowles. The worst in the NBA. Didn't he, take it all this year. didn't he go to Notre Dame? Bill Lambert? Yes, he did. That's true. Bill Lambert went to Notre Dame. He was in with Woolworth at the same time. That's funny. After October 26th, and Eric is with Grandma. Another six, uh, oh another six months. Oh, he'll start to really be interested. Yeah. Like this, so we can really show off what you've done. Yeah. Yes. Oh, also, we got, uh, I, I left out here the uh, proof sets that we received from uh, Aunt Michelle and Uncle Jay, right? Oh, my goodness. <coughs> oh, boy. Is that? Oh. What do we have back here? Something that's... Okay. <coughs> oh, 
Stand 